Welcome back to the ASOG News Studio. My name is Tom Welgum, and delighted to have in studio Charles Godala from SAP. Thanks, Thanks Tom. for stopping by. Thanks. It's a very interesting title. <laughs> Director of Microsoft Ecosystem at SAP. That's right. What is that? What kind of a job is that like? It's it's very wide ranging. Uh, basically, it encompasses being a, a partner with Microsoft, looking at their technologies and how to integrate with them. Also, looking at their ecosystem, their partners in that ecosystem, and how we can leverage that for SAP's advantage as well. So, I cover things uh, from Microsoft Office, SharePoint, to SQL Server, to all the way to how SAP can put technologies on top of that. That is a huge ecosystem. It is. I mean, when you combine the two, the SAP and Microsoft. Absolutely. How do you, you know, stay abreast of all that's happening and stay on top of all this and what partners do what? How do you do that? It's uh, a lot of work. Basically, it's, uh, I have good contacts at Microsoft and we're able to inter interchange and interact frequently. Mm -hmm. But basically, there's some research publications you can stay on top of. Uh, I follow them on the net. Thank goodness for Twitter. <laughs> so, well, sometimes. Thank goodness for Twitter. <laughs> but at the end of the day, there's abilities to you know kind of get some news as it's breaking, uh, hear about it before it's breaking, and so that way we can stay current and make sure we adjust our strategy. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got mobile BI we've been talking a lot about, and now you're doing a presentation yeah. here at uh, SBOUC on social BI. What is social BI as you're seeing it these days? Excellent. Uh, social BI is actually the intersection of social media and business intelligence. And combining the two of them together into this concept of social BI. Uh, so the idea being, how do you put the social into BI, and how do you put the BI into social media, and, and getting the two to work together. Now, the... Uh I'd be a devil's advocate, I'd say, well, that just sounds like combining kind of two hot marketing terms. What are customers, when you're talking to them about this, are they like, wait, are you talking about like Facebook and analytics? What are you talking <laughs> about here? How do you uh, educate or work with customers about you know, that vision that SAP has for this? Absolutely. I mean, there's the concept of, um, is it just a fad or is this a reality? And mm -hmm. I think right now we've seen so much data that points to the fact this is not a fad. You've seen the rise in Facebook adoption. You've seen the rise in, in tweet, uh, tweets and Twitters uh, adoption levels. So at the end of the day, you can see that this is not going away. Mm -hmm. So granted that, what happens next? Well, if you've got a stream full of data of just a bunch of tweets, yep. how do you make sense of it? Like, is there something that you can use to analyze that information? And what importantly, from a company's point of view, are they saying about your company? What's the sentiment? Sure. And this leads to something called sentiment analysis, whether it's something positive or negative about your company, and in fact, you can do what's called hashtag analysis to find out what words they're using in those tweets to describe your company. Some may not be so good. <laughs> right. Well, that's true. We saw uh, Steve Lucas's presentation yesterday, the map of the sentiment analysis, yeah. which is really interesting. I mean, I, I, I think you take that into companies and show them that. That's pretty impressive. Absolutely. And some people just don't know what to do with social media. Some companies are stuck around the concept of what to do with social media. So here's another concept. Here's the vision that we're trying to define is, it's the combination of social media analytics, like we just talked about sentiment sure. analysis, and social engagement. So how do I collaborate inside my organization and outside my organization? So peer-to-peer -peer collaboration mm -hmm. and peer-to-expert collaboration yep. and finding the right people in my network right. that can help me. So we're trying to facilitate both discussions. One is. We'll provide you the ability to analyze your social media and your, all your touch points in social media. And we'll also provide you the tooling to allow you to collaborate with the peers and the networks that you want to be part of. Now, you know, for a long time, the business objects, in some companies, business, business objects was siloed a little bit from the other. Does there have to be this wonderful, you know, integrated back end infrastructure to get this going? Or is this something, I mean, the vision, I'm sure, leads to HANA and all of those lead there. <laughs> but, you know, where would people start if, you know, with this? That, that'd be my question. Absolutely. It's as simple as a web browser. Because mm -hmm. if you think of Streamwork, which is one of the products that we sell, it's just a lovely collaboration tool. It's a standalone. Mm -hmm. And I can invite you to a decision space where we can look at some aspects of how to run, an, uh, for example, a, a conference like in Orlando. Sure. Uh, or we could do something more detailed, like trying to do a product plan for a release cycle. Right? Or, for example, if you're Procter & Gamble, how to release Febreze in... Japan. Yeah. So different decisions can be taken inside of the web browser itself. So you don't need to buy anything. You, know, you can get it for free, or you can decide to pay the enterprise version for $9. Mm -hmm. uh, so for $9 a month, you've got the, the streamer. So it's a low entry point. People can use it, sure. work with it. 
and move up the stack. And as you said, the more complicated the decisions and the bigger the networks, obviously you need more horsepower behind it, and you start to move into things that need in-memory analytics like HANA, but that's not where you start. Right. We talked a little bit about this before. Who is driving the demand? I mean, are you selling to business? Are you selling to ITs? Obviously, have to be involved on some level. Where, yeah. Where's that coming from? It, it's a very interesting marriage between both the business and the IT. So you see, like the introduction of the iPad, it was mostly CEOs driving it downwards. Sure. And you see the same kind of social media is that they don't, uh, they know it's something big and they know they need to do something about it. So they ask a task force, what do I do? Right. <laughs> the task force is usually comprised of both the business and the IT guys to figure it out. IT needs to be involved for security, uh, how do they get things authenticated, what, what tooling and what technologies they put in together. But it's usually the business that we find as the biggest driver because when they find the value, then they can tell the, their CEOs or, or the line of command that in fact there is a generated ROI that will happen because of adopting these methodologies. When some of your customers see the you know, results, like for example the sentiment analysis, I mean, yeah. a lot of times you'll hear people talking about analytics and it's like, well what do we do, you know, how do we make good decisions from this? It seems some of these would be pretty clear, okay, people are, were monitoring Twitter People hate the new product we just, right? The sentiment analysis shows that everyone hates it. Yeah. So that can be pretty clear. Are those, is that by design that you guys want to have those information be so transparent and so obvious? That's part of it. I mean, that's some of the, the easier ones are the, the sentiment analysis that are purely negative. But let, let me give you an example. If I said, is this iPad cool? Or, and then I, I put that out there as a tweet, right? And I'm meaning it in, a, in an idiom at an English level of, wow, this, I, this iPad is cool. Sure. Someone could take that and go, okay, that's a positive sentiment. If I reverse that question and say, isn't this iPad cool? It's a negative in there, which could be construed as a negative in the sentiment analysis, but in right. fact, it is a positive sentiment. Hmm. So there's a very delicate art of teasing out what are positive and what are negative sentiments and making sure you're not acting on just the, uh, the number. You have to look at that in conjunction with the hashtag yep. and surveys. I mean, you have to go back to your population and survey them to check over time that this is in fact is the correct sentiment you're getting and you can refine the process. Because if you're getting it wrong in the first shot and you make a whole campaign to right. <laughs> absolutely, you're going so the wrong you, way. SAP using this internally? So yeah. I know my, my tweets are all being monitored and <laughs> analyzed. I think you're safe. <laughs> okay, thank you. But you guys are using this? Yes, for sure. We have, uh, for example, the last uh, Sapphire event we had, uh, SAP Sapphire is an event we market every year. Uh, we actually were able to market, uh, analyze the tweets, and you might have seen the demonstration with Steve Lucas, yep. where those tweets were then um, analyzed and put in as a green bar of very positive sentiments, a light green bar of medium sentiments, and then a red bar of you know, not so good sentiments, right. and then how to address those not so good sentiments to make them more positive. So does this ultimately lead to real-time analysis, you think, like uh, on the fly, are we there? That's almost there. I mean, the concept of doing it real-time breaks down on two levels. If the Twitter AP the Twitter feeds are coming in real-time stream that I can analyze them as they go along, then I can count them and do them real-time. So it depends on the customer's infrastructure. Most customers we find have to do it in two steps. One is they take a bunch of Twitter feeds and put it in a data warehouse, and then they analyze what's in that data warehouse. Okay. So it's a near real-time, but not quite real-time. Okay. Last question. The Microsoft SAP relationship yeah. is a fascinating one yeah. for someone like me who watches both companies. Um, how is the relationship today, and where do you either give us a hint at kind of where is it going? Will it be the same? Are there new things you think coming out? Yes, uh, yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, where's the Microsoft relationship today? It's it's there's been a huge history of Microsoft partnering with SAP Classic, mm -hmm. and then there was a huge history of Microsoft partnering with Business Objects. And when the two things came together, there was 15 years of Business Objects partnership, 30 plus years of SAP partnership came together into one company. And we've done a dance with Microsoft recently because they've got some products that sometimes overlap with some of ours. Sure. But the concept is uh, those products generate a small amount of revenue for Microsoft. In fact, they're, they're considered free in their stack. And for us, these are some of the core issues that drive a lot of our products. So we've been able to combine the two together in things like Duet, yep. things like Live Office, uh, Analysis for Office. So a lot of our products are geared into dropping things into a comfortable Excel-based format right. that most of the people don't really want to leave. So right. when they're using our product set, it's a little scary maybe. We introduce them slowly, slowly by, okay, stay in Excel, we'll start you there. But then over time, you'll realize that there's more power that you need and you'll start to use bigger and bigger tool sets which come to our side. 
Absolutely. I think SAP has done a great job realizing that Excel is not going anywhere. No. We're working with that. <laughs> well, Charles, thank you very much for stopping by. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Up next, we've got a very interesting discussion coming with three SAP mentors, so come back in about 10 minutes.